advocate for yourself. If a doctor is telling you something that actually you believe is not aligned with what you feel or you know what they're saying you're allowed to question that authority figure just because they've got a medical degree that doesn't make them that they're all knowing no one is all knowing we're forever learning i just sort of saw it as i'm not an ill person i've just got bad health right now that's how i've continued to see the journey as well and i believe that mindset is everything Marshall, thanks for coming on the Body Mind Practice podcast. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, good stuff. Glad you could be here. Um, so you are you've been on a bit of a journey, to be honest. And and ironically, since we last were together at a wedding yeah. two yeah. years ago. Yeah, that's when it started to go down. <laughs> <laughs> it's mad because I'm like, damn, you've been through so much and I haven't caught up with you like physically. Yeah, literally. <laughs> That wedding was like the last good thing that happened to me. Wow. <laughs> it was so in mine. So yeah, it was um, after that, that's when my health just completely. Yeah. And you've just, you've transformed your, your entire life and your work and your play and everything. So what you're doing now, you're, you're a creator, you're a blogger, your Instagram is just full of knowledge and you've clearly spent so much time on it and like researching so much so many different things it's just a wealth of knowledge even going through your page i think i spent like an hour on it just the other day and i'm like oh my god there's just so much more here <laughs> it's just amazing yeah um, you know what? i'm a bit obsessed with it like as in I'm, a, I'm just obsessed with the answer i love digging like i love researching so uh -huh. if i can just find pieces of information and then sort of like break them down into layman's terms for people and yeah. just be like basically this is what this means and people are like oh my god that's so amazing profound etc i'm like okay well i've done my job because i enjoy doing that aspect mm -hmm. of it whereas a lot of people they don't have the time they don't have the time they don't know where to look they don't know sure. it's quite overwhelming for people to yeah, just, really the, the terminology is is that way for feels like for a reason but yeah. it's it, you, you do a good job in mediating it and breaking it down into into simple terms digestible wow. terms Thank and you. Do, doing the hard work yeah it's it's, it's <laughs> awesome to what to see um, and you're doing workshops, you're doing events. Yeah, yeah so I'm launching my workshops next week um, okay. and they're all going to be online and um, it's just going to be the sort of a similar thing to what I do online, but just in greater detail because there's only so many stories that somebody wants to sit through on Instagram and scroll through, you know, like there's sure. people who will do maybe four or five and then if they're really engaged they will do maybe a bit more than that but yeah. you can't really soup it in depth you can't talk for an hour unless you know you're doing an instagram live and again they don't necessarily get loads of engagement so it's more of a case of all right how can i take that off of instagram use a similar format where it's just me talking and teaching and breaking mm. things down into layman's terms for people so that they get like a real good baseline of what health and well-being actually is for a small cost because this is the other thing that I you know realized very quickly is that I have to earn a living absolutely um but the way that the alternative medicine community can be set up is very elitist you know like health and well-being is it is what well, it can be still um aimed at a specific type of person and a specific um socioeconomic class and so for me that's problematic because i'm like you know these people have the money to go and pay a 400 pound an hour nutritionist to get a full protocol and package about what they should and shouldn't be doing but it's not those people that i'm concerned about it's the other people that are just on you know either universal credit because they can't actually work because they're so unwell or people that just are coming from like low socioeconomic backgrounds that don't have that kind of um, sort of, it, they can't invest into their health that way. But there are so many things that we can do um, that are free, like day to day. And you know a lot of them, things like breath work and grounding and meditation and like, um, well, I know that you get in the sea every day. That's not necessarily accessible to everyone, but it's just that whole idea of like- hey, Cold showers are. Yeah, cold showers. <laughs> You know, movement therapy, like 
singing to like um, activate your parasympathetic nervous system. There are so many little tips and tricks and tools that we can just do literally every single day that don't, you don't, you shouldn't have to pay an extortionate amount to know this information. Yeah. I was having this conversation with someone the other day about the kind of the healing and, and it is alternative medicine and why it's, it's, it's a lot of people, not, not all, but they package it up in a certain way. I think I was watching Heal and we did, we were doing a documentary club. Uh, so every Sunday we'd watch documentary, get together on Zoom in lockdown and discuss the documentary. It was really good. Hi. And one of the times it was Heal and I'd watched it a few times before, but then someone brought up the, um, so if you haven't watched documentary before, those who are listening or watching, so Heal is um, uh, an amazing documentary. It's on Netflix, I think. I mean, after this conversation, I'll put it in the notes and stuff. Um, but it's it's a very much a go-to if it's kind of like your first time into discovering these kind of things. Um, so yeah, we were watching that, and someone brought up the fact that it was it wasn't it didn't seem accessible to 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 these people yeah. who need it, and and in terms of the financial costs as well. And that, and, that, and my argument was, well, that's not that is a case and that's something there's a conversation there but also information has never been so accessible yes so it's exactly it's not really an excuse anymore to not be able to access mm-hmm. and spend time learning and studying mm-hmm. and i think that this is where you have to like bridge the gap between mm. people basically wanting everything spoon fed and then also saying, well, actually, you do need to take responsibility for yeah. yourself uh-huh. because we are conditioned to believe that we can live our lives however we want and that someone else will fix it when it goes wrong. Yeah. And then there are some people like myself that was not applicable to. And I... I mean, just to go into my story very briefly. And like yeah, briefly. we were going to, let's, we, we could we'll yeah. rewind in a second, but yeah, carry yeah. on. Yeah, so I um, had years of, of weird, like, mystery health problems, basically, that the Western medical system, and I use that term over the NHS, because that is the system that's problematic, is the Western medical system, it's not the NHS, we're very blessed and lucky to have a free health service but unfortunately there are certain things that it just can't solve um so yeah I was in and out of hospital for years with just random things like loads of problems with my kidneys um like really severe like nerve issues like um nerve pain down my whole left side um I had to have my appendix out but then when they took it out they just found like really severe abdominal inflammation but with no cause and I just deep within went into like a real sort of low point in in time and I was like reflecting this was all in one year and I was like reflecting on all of this and I was like right this doesn't make sense like, I, did, I don't understand this. I'm 25. I was 25 at the time. Like, why is my body not working? I just don't get it. Like, and that was the point for me where I started to just, like, take control of my own health. And I sort of removed myself from the Western medical system because every single time I went there uh, to the GP, I would just be given pills and told, oh, you're depressed or you've got health anxiety. And that was about it. That's all they really did. They sent me to a physio who was an absolute angel because with all this pain that I was in, he was just like, there is something wrong with you, like physically. I don't know what it is, but this is, you're like one of the only people that your body doesn't change, doesn't get any better. It just continues to be like swollen and inflamed and all this stuff. So I started to like change my nutrition. I at the time became pescatarian and then I went vegetarian and then stopped drinking alcohol for a year and um like was going to see healers and having therapy and just like doing all these different bits and pieces and I would spend my weekends like getting reflexology and um going to sound baths and that kind of stuff because I just I didn't know why at the time I just knew that it made me feel good so I was like that's what I'm gonna do and at the time as well I was working in the music industry which was really fun, really fun jobs. I did, you know, everything from um, booking agencies, tour management, record labels, artist management. I just did all of these different things. 
and um it but it was like very go, 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 you know? So anytime that my health started to sort of dip a bit, I'd be like, oh, I'm just a bit burnt out. Um, not really understanding the impact of what burnout meant and what stress is and what the nervous system is and any of this stuff. So I was just like on a hamster wheel. And then um, in 2018, this was the turning point for me as to where everything just like completely car crashed. Mm -hmm. So I um, got pregnant and I just it was like wrong person wrong time just everything about it was just not right so I decided to have a termination and it went wrong and the impact of that on my body physically but also mentally emotionally spiritually destroyed me and I was also on some very heavy medication that was like anti-sepsis medication to stop my body from going into septic shock because essentially they they sort of sent me away telling me that I was fine when like the operation wasn't complete. So it was it was very, very dark and it and it was very um impactful on so many layers. And this is when my health just fell apart. And I started to get like neurological symptoms and then the pain that I was in exemplified by a million and I got chronic fatigue syndrome. I was having gut issues. My skin was awful. I just couldn't, I just was like, I, there is something seriously wrong with me. Like, I don't know what it is, but there's something really wrong. And, um, and then I moved flat. And when I moved flat, um, and the, the reason that I did that was to be nearer my job, to think, you know, that's gonna make my life a bit easier. Or at least my commute is gonna lessen and I'll be able to get up in the morning. I then moved into this flat and my health just, I felt like I was dying basically. And um, so after more and more and more research, because at this point I was essentially completely socially isolated anyway, apart from going to work, I would just go to work, go home. That was my life for probably I'd say a good three, four months. And um, then I started reading all of this research coming out of the US about toxic mold, Lyme disease, inflammation, how the body and the immune system just get super suppressed by these like toxins and it can't cope anymore. And I was like, this is me. This is what's going on. And in the flat that I just moved into, it had black mold in it. And I was like, oh my God, I can't believe it. So I essentially was having so many symptoms and flare ups that I just grabbed a bag and left. And my friend did a GoFundMe and I got uh, raised enough money that I could go to this treatment center in Mexico, uh, which is a hospital and they treat various different types of people from cancer patients to diabetes to people like myself, which is sort of fall under the more like mystery illness kind of category, um, where you have integrative medicine treatment. So yes, they might give a cancer patient uh, low dose chemo but they're also giving them like high dose vitamin c infusions so for me personally like there was um they found when i got there i had a very severe case of pneumonia and um no immune system my immune system just was like on zero so you've got these cells called nk cells which are our um natural killer cells and um they are the ones that you know, fight off bacteria, viruses, that kind of thing. So we're sort of used to understanding white blood cells, but there's this like certain specific signaler and that's called your NK cell. And a healthy person is anywhere above 500, uh, oh, sorry, 300. And uh, I was at 33. So I hadn't like barely any of these cells left. So my immune system was just not having the ability to fight anything that was going on in my body. So I also had like a reactivated virus from okay. childhood called the parvo virus and that was attacking my joints so i just like i finally sort of felt like i got all these answers from this this hospital and i was there for three and a half weeks in the end having really intense treatment um so just to rewind a sec so you went from the flat and you moved to be close to work yeah and in that process so then you because you were experiencing illness before you moved into this yeah. black mold flat. Yes. And then it was evident that there was mold there. Yeah. And when your health went downhill, they just, you know, to probably the, the, the bottom point and you were like, uh, this yeah. is, this, this, yeah. So, so that happened. Did you go seek a doctor then? Did you go and see yeah. any advice? Yeah. What, what was the reaction of, of doctors? And Nothing wrong with you. It's all in your head. Like I had, I had like a distended stomach. I couldn't eat anything. I was basically just drinking water and eating um, like 
a, a piece of fruit essentially like a day because I literally looked about seven months pregnant. I couldn't um, eat at all. And they gave me a um, colonoscopy and they were just like, no, we haven't found anything. Like no parasites and nothing. And I'm like, okay, but why, like, why do I look like this? Like, I can't eat anything. And is the answer is just like, oh, we just don't know. We just, you know, we don't know. Mm. And it was the same thing with the nerve stuff. It was like, um, you know, well, well, we don't know why you've got pain, but here's sort of like loads of tramadol. And I'm like, okay, but I need to know. Like, I, I don't just want to be put on pills. Yeah. Um, so you had that knowledge though of this I think pill. intuitively. Yeah. I don't think it was something that I understood at the time as to why I felt that way. But I think that that was just an intuitive response for me mm -hmm. to be like, this, is, this isn't this is sitting right. You can't tell me why I should be taking these opioids, but you're giving them to me and saying that's, that's going to sort you out when it's not. Mm -hmm. So I just, it didn't sit right with me at all. And I just started to question like everything and everyone. Um, that's probably the fundamental thing. Start to question everything. who's telling you this because we give our agency away so quickly. And it's back to what you're saying at the start. And we, the, the, the fundamental thing that's wrong with the rest of the medical system is that we feel like we aren't responsible for our own health. So, so we go to someone, Gabo Mathe talks about it. He's got this amazing quote, like you, you go to the doctor, we've given our authority away, you go to be fixed, you go to be told what to do and you feel like you've got no part in it. Exactly, when actually you have to advocate for yourself. If a doctor is telling you something that actually you believe is not aligned with what you feel or you know what they're saying you're allowed to question that authority figure just because they've got a medical degree that doesn't make them that they're all knowing no one is all knowing we're forever learning and i think that what we get disillusioned by with the medical system currently is that the doctorate degree means that 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 pedestal is there for the taking and it's incorrect because that person in particular has studied one area and that doesn't take away from the area that they have studied. I'm sure that they are very well versed in that area of study. However, to just turn around and point blank, shut down any other suggestions is problematic. And I've experienced that numerous times. Um, even, even, you know, as late as last year when I was still like in treatment, when I got back to the UK, I was in treatment until for a whole year, I was nonstop in treatment. And I had to get universal credit couldn't work, had to quit my job as a consultant. There was no, you know, like that was it. It was just the government or nothing else. The government will not accept toxic mold on a form. It's just not something that they will accept. They don't, they don't recognize it's a very it. under research. Maybe the past very, five years, it's like, yeah. Caught, yeah. It's, it's caught got a bit of media for people like yeah. yourself for crowdfunding yeah. and, and drawing yeah. attention to it. Um, you're in the tabloids, you're in the sun. <laughs> it was, <laughs> I yeah. remember, I remember seeing uh, it. I was, uh, yeah, it was, it was really crazy because in the time, in the moment as well, you're just like, is this really happening? Like what is going on? And, um, and actually what I found out was the reason that my health started to decline, you know, those five years previously was because that house had mold and quite a lot of it, but I didn't know. I didn't know any of this. So yeah, you got a bit of mold in the bathroom, you clean, you get rid of it and then it might grow back a bit and you're like, oh, yeah. well, it's just whatever. It's just a bit of mold. No, black mold can literally kill you. And so what happens is it gives off spores called mycotoxins. And for some people, just their, their makeup and, and their bodies find it difficult to get rid of these mycotoxins and they sit in your cells and then that's when they cause the dysfunction. Mm -hmm. And it's systemic dysfunction. It's not just like this one organ is affected or, or like this one finger or whatever. It's actually your systems get really badly affected. So that's neurologically um like respiratory immune endocrine um like yeah there's just there's just a lot of uh, lymph lymph drainage is just basically non-existent in people that have got too much toxicity and so imagine that your sewer system of your body is completely blocked and it's just getting filled up with more and more and more toxicity and so you're going to get worse and worse unless you stop you unplug it is essentially the the problem yeah um so yeah there was just this like whole different side that i started to learn around medicine and just literally unlearn everything i'd ever been told my mum's also a nurse so it was quite difficult um implementing some of these beliefs because you've got somebody and my granddad was a doctor like you know that sort of 
information has been passed down um and i'm like mum it's all a lie <laughs> like wow what like, was her response what, what did she respond what was her kind of like through this process very resistant at oh, the start wow. very resistant to the point where she just didn't believe it um and then but i think it was also a combination of like shock and guilt at the same time as as me actually being so unwell because i also looked very ill like there was no you could you wouldn't look at me and be like oh she looks all right like it got to the point where i looked very unwell like i was gray i had like scabs all over my face my hair was falling out mm. like uh, my my legs were like stick thin but my stomach was distended like i wasn't well at all so there was sort of like no argument that something was clearly quite wrong but at the same time it was like almost that disbelief of can it really be this are we sure there's not something else so that's why it was really i was so grateful that you know i did raise the money that i needed to to go to this hospital in mexico because they're all uh medically trained doctors they've all been to med school they have just then shifted their approach into functional and yeah. integrative medicine which looks at the more natural um remedies and Mexico in itself as well obviously has like a deep ingrained history of shamanism and plant medicines and that kind of thing. So you're immediately around people that understand the world from a slightly different angle that isn't just, you know, Western, Western, Western. Yeah, it's almost like they haven't disconnected, disconnected totally with nature and they, exactly. they're very, their relationship with it is, is, is quite real still. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that's what we lack here, like completely. I think that, yes, there's individual doctors for sure, but there's like, as an example, I went to a GP just to get this universal credit signature and his response was, oh, you know, they, oh, what's your job and blah, 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 because I had to go to the one in my parents' house. Um, and so I'd never been there before and it was just, yeah, what's your job? And I said, oh, I'm, well, nothing, because I've not been well. And uh, he basically diagnosed me with post-viral fatigue syndrome, which is, Hmm. what's going on with a lot of people at the moment with with covid i think a lot of people are getting this post viral fatigue syndrome but he was just like oh well you know we'll leave it six months and then if it doesn't get any better you'll have to go to an immuno immunologist and i was like okay but i'm actually doing this 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 and i started to explain to him the protocol that i was following which was all herbal natural you know infrared sauna coffee enemas just like homeopathy, like just started to like, you know, trickle in this information to him that I was working on my, I wasn't just sitting at home doing nothing. And he was like, oh, well, I don't believe in any of that. And I was like, okay, but I'm not really asking you to. And I, but I said, why, why, why don't you believe in it? And he said, well, I only believe in science. So for me, immediately that disconnect from understanding that the most scientific thing that we have is nature, is the problem with the system that's currently in place where you're studying disease to such an in-depth level. But then the actual fundamentals of like, you know, human life and actual what health is and the ability to be healthy and move freely and like be amongst the, the trees and actually breathe deeply into your diaphragm and from your stomach, not from your, your throat and your chest, which most people are doing, there's no like education there. There's none whatsoever. So you've got somebody turning around and say, oh, I don't believe in that because it's not science. Well, it is. Yeah. And for, for me, that's them saying, well, I only believe in things you can measure and see mm -hmm. when we just know that there's more than what our five senses can pick up out there. That's just, that, that is that that is science understanding that we can only perceive things so you just can't disregard things like that you can't just science also is is saying this is what we know yeah and also this is what we don't know and looking at the whole system but it's 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 funny how people just disregard stuff like that so so you yeah. so you went to mexico mm -hmm. let's let's get into that a bit because what what made you go there? Were you, were you looking online? Were you, were you looking at yeah, things? I was recommended actually because um, I I had to. I've been researching for a long time before that, and then I started to find, you know, other people like me and just these centers. They've got loads in Germany, um, and then they've also got loads in um, Mexico, where people go for these integrative treatment centers. But 
uh, the reason I didn't go to Germany was because um, you couldn't stay in the hospital. Like you would go for treatment and then you'd have to go and stay in like an Airbnb or a hotel or something. And I was like, I'm really ill. Like I <laughs> I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. So Mexico was a natural hospital. Like it had a ward, like one floor was an actual ward where they did operations and they did, you know, if you were that sick, you would be on the wards. So there was a couple of times for me where I had really serious reactions to treatment. Like I couldn't walk. Um, and so I was on the ward for a little while. Um, but apart from that, you sort of look like you're in a hotel. Yeah. Um, you've got a, a very documentary style handheld yeah. camera. Like there's one on your stories and Instagram. This yeah. is what I think it was like, you know, it does it in weeks. It's like 62 weeks ago or something. And it's you and you place the camera at the other side of the room and you're, and you're getting up and you're saying, this is my day. This yeah. is me walking. Yeah. It's, it's impossible. Yeah, so that was the, that was the treatment. You were kind of in the mix of it in the, in the middle of it, weren't you? Yeah. And I think as well, we're really disillusioned by like treatment sometimes, because I think that unless you've been through something along the lines of um, chemotherapy, which people are quite aware and um, understand that chemotherapy is there to sort of like kill off your, cancer cells but it will also kill off your immune system and it will the actual treatment will make you quite sick yeah so that's a well-known thing the treatments that i was having i was like yeah put it all in me you know do everything like i want to get rid of this stuff like me thinking i'd be in this hospital for three weeks and walk out fine i i didn't have a clue no one sat me down and was like there's a lot of damage you know your body is gonna take a while like no one did that for me um and so I just threw myself into every treatment. And even when I was having these really bad reactions, I was like, leave it a day and do it again. Because in my head, all the research was pointing to this treatment does work for the condition that you've got. Whereas actually some people just respond really badly to certain treatments. And that's when you should start looking at other things. So um, I just didn't, I didn't understand. I just didn't understand. I, I was very... I was very alone at that point. Like I was really just like in this headspace of, I couldn't believe what was happening, you yeah. know? And you went on your own to Mexico. Yeah, I went on my own. Like to, to take someone with you, it was more money and that just wasn't sure. really financially um, viable. Yeah, so when you say that you would just give, give me the treatments, I'll, I'll, I'll just figure it out like give me what you've got and then my body's gonna either accept it or reject it like mm -hmm. what what was what were the doctors over there saying they were great because they really understood the importance of like listening to your patients like that was mm -hmm. a real big key point for them and also you have a therapist there and you have an energy healer and you have a chiropractor like you have all of these people outside of just your immediate doctor on hand so when i couldn't walk i had everyone come into the ward like the energy healer the therapist the chiropractor like to just like try and sort of realign whatever damage had been done the, that previous day um and so and my mindset as well i was very like i just sort of saw it as i'm not an ill person i've just got bad health right now that's how I've continued to see the journey as well. And I believe that mindset is everything. Whereas you had other people in the hospital that were very um, stuck in victimhood. And it's a very classic thing. Of course, you're really ill. Like, absolutely. It's, it's like the worst thing that, that it's suffering. It's painful. It's scary. Like, it really can just knock you for six. But if you sit with the story of your illness rather than just being like I'm here this is what I'm doing I'm getting treatment and then I'm going to go and do this and this and this and I'm going to get better that's the mindset you just have to be in for any form of serious illness like I have I was speaking to my friend actually yesterday who I was in the hospital with she's got Lyme disease mold all of that kind of stuff and we were both talking about this and we were both like you know the physical element and that kind of element of treatments and all the treatments that you get given that's absolutely important of course because you need your physical body to sort of get back to a state of being balanced and understanding what its job is but the actual real crux and the way that you get better is through your mind without a doubt and 
like even Dr. Joe Dispenza has like written a whole book on the placebo effect and like what that actually really means in relation to quantum physics and you literally sending, you know, those thoughts of I'm healthy, I am healed or I am healing or whatever into your, if your very being every day, it does make a profound impact. Um, so it's like, even when I was going into treatments, I had this one treatment called hypothermia, where they, uh, you go under general anesthetic and then they put you into this like massive big machine, which looks a bit like a sunbed. And then um, you are heated up until your body reaches like 108 degrees. And it's, it's a bit like sort of heating you from the inside up. So all of the poison comes up and out of uh, your body. Like, like slow roasting something. Literally like a slow roast bit. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. So I was just like, okay, cool. This is like- Wow, ridiculous. general anesthetic. <laughs> Thanks, Western medical system. Yeah. She wouldn't want to do that, wake. <laughs> no. I don't think that you'd, I think you'd probably go into a coma if you okay. did it awake because you're that's wow. too much well, you were all in you were you were just like I'm, yeah. I'm getting healed and whatever it takes yeah that's but, what I felt like I was that's like what it's <laughs> taken though and that's quite yeah. it's obviously you have the mindset you know that through through these experience there is the learning and there's lessons and and all of that so that's fundamental but it is you could see it as, as sad that this it's happened this way I yeah. mean because it's uh, it's almost it didn't need to no it didn't need to it didn't need to and that that's why i feel very passionate about what i do now yeah. because i i don't like there are so many more people like me so many like it's unbelievable like how many people are in mm. the, these kind of situations um and so many that don't know also i don't know yeah it's the other thing so you've got the people that are diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome or fibromyalgia and then they're just told, okay, well, that's your life. Like, you know, crack on with it. Whereas actually those two conditions, there's various different variables, of course, for different people. And that, like, this is not a diagnosis thing. I'm not a medical professional, but what, it, what I am gonna say is that those conditions are to do with your terrain. So if your terrain <clears throat> is um, in any way, shape or form, got any toxicity sitting in it, that includes bacteria, viruses, um, actual toxins from your day-to-day -day life, chemicals, pesticides, um, you know, mold, of course, yeah, all of that stuff. That is going to have a severe impact on the way that your body is actually functioning. And all of the, the root cause of illness is inflammation. So if you've got any form of inflammation from this stuff that's going on, then your body will react and respond in different ways. And when you actually um, speak to people who have got syndromes, you know, whether that's like a neurological pain syndrome, um, or they've been diagnosed with something like fibromyalgia, which there are many people who have been diagnosed with fibromyalgia by a GP who do not have fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia is where it's, an, it's something to do with your muscles and your muscles literally go rock solid. That, that's like- Yeah, not it's like a fatigue, what, isn't it? Constant yeah, fatigue. And, it, and there's a lot of people walking around with this fibromyalgia diagnosis and that's not what's going yeah. on. They've actually got like neurological pain. And obviously there's a scale as well. This isn't totally. like, we've got it, we've got it. It, there's a scale you can have it a little bit you can have it a yeah. lot it's it's quite Absolutely. interesting and when you start to open your mind up to that you think oh wow let's pay attention to where we're where we're living where we're where we're staying a large percentage of time like it, it's it's fascinating yeah exactly so this is the thing with all of this kind of knowledge and understanding um it's sad that it had to happen on on that side of the spectrum in, in one aspect but I am very grateful because I'm still young enough and obviously I like you know this was only a year ago like I've I'm still healing from this and now I'm actually dealing with the aftermath of this situation which is trauma and it's a lot but what I am learning and what how I am able to like deliver a message and information to other people and help them on their journeys, which isn't necessarily just physical. Um, like my, there's one of my clients, as an example, she had uh, Lyme disease, went to Mexico, did all the treatments, did all the physical stuff, was in bed for three years, terrible symptoms, lots of neurological stuff, lots of pain. We started working together predominantly 
and um, on her mental and emotional well-being and the tools that were needed to sort of navigate through that. Within about nine weeks of working with her, she's like walking 14,000 steps a day now. And she's like pretty much able to function. Um, there's like the odd day where she might get a little flare up, but it's nothing even remotely compared to before. So like, as I continue to learn and as I continue to develop and research and understand the body from the mind, body and soul perspective, I can only be grateful because like, this is also for my future kids. You know, I'm going to be able to make sure that my future children are going to live very healthy, happy lives genuinely, because I will understand how to look after myself, prepare my body for when I do want to have kids. And then when they are actually born, they're not going to have the same impact from living in this like toxic world that I was born into with no understanding. You know, I was, I was sort of um, not really given the best start in regards to health when I was born because I wasn't born very well. I was born with like severely low blood sugar that like no one could figure out why. They just put me in an incubator and put me on loads of medication again, you're putting me on medication when I'm literally out the womb, but you don't know why. And then throughout my entire um, childhood years was on various antibiotics. And now I believe that actually that was, the likelihood is, is that I probably had candida overgrowth from a very, very young age um, due to like overuse of antibiotics and medications. I had ear infections and like that kind of thing, yeast infections as a kid. So when you actually start to look at your health as from when you're a child, it's not just this one thing that's going to affect you. It's literally all of it. And then that's when you can start to really break down like, okay, how can I sort of start to strip back some of these layers? You know, how can I really um, get to the crux of, of what's really going on here? And I think that one of the most under understood areas is stress. That's, for me, when you understand stress from a point of view that isn't, it's just stress or it's just in your head, you take those statements away and you actually say, well, stress causes physiological responses and chemical interactions in your brain that are actually super damaging. And then you'll have, you know, an increase in cortisol, an increase in histamine response, an increase in um, adrenaline. And these are the things that basically these hormones, when they go out of control, that's when they start to cause inflammation and that's when they start to cause problems. And that's when your immune system can't function properly anymore. So when you actually say to people like stress is not something that you should take, you know, lightly because most people, I, I was like that for years. I was just palmed off by the doctor. It's just stress. I'd leave feeling so triggered and being like, it's not just fucking stress. Like there's something wrong with me. Like, what is it? And this is the thing, like so many people are now in that headspace of if you say it's stress, it's in your head. Well, of course it's in your head because your brain is in your head and your brain is connected to everything through our nervous system. So we have to like, even just like reprogramming those like trigger words and the way that we're explaining stuff, I think is super important for people because they're disillusioned as to what actually is causing their body to like really shut down. Um, and it's another area for me that I, I'm like really delving into. There's a um, Dr. Gay, um, Dr. Oh my gosh, what's his name? I'm looking on my bookshelf. <laughs> um, Gabe Mate. Yeah. Okay, so like his work on stress is phenomenal and understanding. Like as well. Yeah, exactly. It like it's just so good where you can read it from this person that has got a very profound understanding of what stress and trauma actually does like you know on the science level but also on that other side which is the side that we don't you know we're not really necessarily going to understand but it's about disconnection is what i believe it's and disconnection which what i was going to say hmm. addiction he's Absolutely. got loads of stuff on addiction and and the ups like alcoholic addiction the opposite of being an alcoholic isn't sobriety. It's not being sober. It's connection. That is the opposite of addiction. Yeah, absolutely. And it's like, I mean, me and you met when we were young ravers and we just didn't really like think about anything. And we were just like, you know, partying and having fun. And then when you actually read this stuff and you're like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah, this is, 
ticking a few boxes and you start to really understand like what a coping mechanism is and why you're doing it and what the trauma spectrum is because that's the other thing trauma is a, again it's a scale it's a spectrum you've got one person that could be in a car accident walk away and be like i'm alive it's fine and you've got the other person that's sitting in the same car and they'll walk away and then they'll get severe ptsd and that's why we have to like understand that every single person's individualized healing response system is is going to be different on various different factors there's certain people like you know what people say to me well why didn't your housemate get ill and i was like well because of various reasons from you know as i've explained when i was a child i didn't have a very good health um then and then i had this happen and this happened like, there was just so many things that accumulate and when you understand like how trauma accumulates into that as well as the poor health so like some people are just set up to, to fail because they don't have the information or the understanding of, you know, sort out these bits and then you can start putting your body back together. It's also why like mental illness is through the roof because people just don't have the emotional tools. And then they're sent to a doctor, put on some sort of medication without actually understanding where the root of, of their issue actually is. And the likelihood is, is that for a lot of uh, mental illness, um, causing those kind of chemical imbalances, it is trauma. Mm -hmm. So much of what you said there rings so many bells. Yeah. And there's so much we could talk about in all of that as well. Yeah. I think let's stress, for example, one of the points, like it's just crazy how we think it's external and we think stress, oh, I'm stressed because of this. I'm stressed because of that. And it's like, well, you've responded to it. And like yeah. your example with the car, it's a response. For, for, it's actually, there's no, there's no bad response. There's an adaptive response. Your body's adapted. At, at, it's chosen this way to deal with something. Yeah. To almost for survival. Well, look for, it's a survival mechanism. Mm -hmm. and, and, and stress being external, it's just not true. It's, it's, it's how you're perceiving your environment and your... Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's why I love adaptogens as herbs because their literal job is to help our bodies cope and adapt to stress. So you've got herbs like ashwagandha, holy basil, um, or Tulsi, they're my two favorites, but also astragalus and there's a couple of others, um, passion flower, that really just help the body's response systems build a shield is the best way to describe it or an armor so it's why i love herbs and like herbs are actually allies if you understand what the point of them is mm -hmm. but again you've got people that are going to their doctors and just being given these pills that are like disconnecting them rather than connecting them to their authentic self to actually like bring up all of this this darkness that they need to transmute it's literally just sort of like oh we're gonna put a barrier here um whereas actually there's like um, for example, Ayurveda as a me medical system, it comes from India, of course, oldest medical system in the world. Ashwagandha is a staple in treatment of depression, anxiety. Um, and it works. And it works because it allows people to really like get to a point where their body is able to cope with stress. And when it's able to cope with stress, you're able to then cope with your trauma. And when your trauma actually surfaces, you don't shut down, you don't start disconnecting um, as a coping mechanism you actually can bring all of this stuff up and out. And I think that like my understanding of purging is what I believe everyone needs to go through. I believe that everyone needs to understand what a purge is and how to accomplish that. Because when you sort of like latch on to the idea and the concept that is worldwide, you know, this isn't just something that is in herbalism. This is like, you know, everywhere, Africa, uh, a, like various parts of Asia, of course, um, like uh, Aboriginal Australia, Native Americans, um, Central and South America, basically anywhere but the Western world understands what a purge is. <laughs> and can you, can you just describe it? Yes. Purging to me um, is essentially removing that that should not be within your body. So that includes actual physical elements, so such as any form of toxin, but also toxic thought patterns, trauma, um, like anxious thought patterns, like that kind of stuff. And on a spiritual level, entities and um, 
you know, energies basically that like latch onto you. So there's sort of different ways that you can purge and you can look at it. Um, I was working a lot with Cambo last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's talk about that. <laughs> Cambo is the master purge. It's like, it's an amazing medicine. It comes from um, the um, Amazon, well, from Peru. And um, it's, a, it's from the monkey tree frog. And it's basically the sweat of the monkey tree frog. They um, basically milk it. I think that's the right terminology. Milking the toad. Milk the toad, milk the toad yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, they milk this toad and then they um, put, we, we can't ingest this poison. Uh, if we ingest it, we die. Interesting. So it's like a technology. It is. And what they found, because of course, the Western world has latched on to, oh, well, why does this work so well? And why are people getting these results from using Cambo as a medicine? Um, and the reason is, is that because it is has so many um, peptides in the um, sweat that are so closely linked to our actual peptides that exist within us. So what happens is, is that when um, you go through a ceremony with, um, with a shaman, they basically put the um, poison onto your skin through a little like burn burn hole what they do with just taking the first two layers of skin off with um, incense usually um, and then they apply it to, to the top layer of your skin and your skin absorbs it and what happens is is that it goes you can feel it happening in real time it's insane um, it sort of like rushes through your body cleaning each cell taking out all of the stuff that's not meant to be there putting it into your stomach so that you throw it up and so it's not a pleasant experience, don't get me wrong. <laughs> um, purging can be, and usually is, one of the most painful things to go through, even if that isn't, you're using, you know, um, something like Cambo, you can do this. A, a purge can be through, you can have a purge through journaling, you know, you, you bring up something through journaling, comes to the surface and you're like, oh my God, like, this is really intense. This is a lot, but you, that's a purge. You're getting it up and out. Yeah, right? I've never associated this, but now you talk about it. I think about yoga practice and yeah. how when you move your body in certain ways. You're, you're unlocking different joints and mobility yeah. and, and you, energy just comes out and you, you start feeling yeah. different emotion and, yeah. the, and, and the system of yoga has, has, has literally worked out what parts of your body release certain emotions absolutely so it's, it's yeah it's purging it's well look at kundalini mm -hmm. it's like a prime example of of a purge it's like yeah, you, you, can, sure. you, you activate your kundalini energy yeah. that is your body going yes. yeah. <laughs> get it out so yeah so this whole idea of purging is 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 super powerful but yeah going back to cambo it's like you um you you sort of have to fall into it you, you you know the resistance with anything i think that if you if you resist anything it just gets worse so absolutely if you resist it persists it does and so <laughs> you fall into this sort of ceremony and you, when you do it you know you have a shaman there somebody that understands yeah so it does sound like a psychedelic but do you have many yeah. visuals no or? no it's not it's and this is psychedelic is it no, and this is where it's different from mushrooms or ayahuasca or bufo or any of those other plant medicines. And why it's, it, Cambo is legal in the UK. It's not illegal. Um, because you it is a very- You can't find those bloody frogs anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's, um, yeah, it's, it, it's a physical thing. However, what it does do is it goes into your limbic system. So your limbic system is the system in the brain that um, stores and processes trauma. Now for a lot of people um, where they, and what I'm learning as well about the limbic system on a huge level is that um, if you've been around some kind of like physical injury, physical um, illness, then your limbic system becomes impaired and you have to actually restore your limbic function for your to give yourself the ability to process emotion and, and process trauma and all of these different things and emotionally regulate yourself again. Um, and you'll find that a lot of people who are ill or have been through injury and stuff like that, their emotions do become dysregulated. Like they, they will start reacting to things in a, in a quite a like weird way. Like, you know, somebody might say something and the trigger is so much, but for one person they might be like, oh, okay. Yeah, whatever and then another person they want to punch them 
like that is an emotional dysregulation and i think that i personally think that like there's like the amount of people that are walking around with this is going to be through the roof mm. um but we just don't necessarily have any actual study on that because yeah how many people have, have been through something traumatic in some way shape or form and never been supported so then your limbic system gets stuck so yeah and it's not their fault it's not their fault it's it's when you when you when you look into this stuff and you and you really people are walking around and they're not well like mm. you you can see that you can see people yeah. not having a better good relationship with their body yeah. and, and it's it, it, it's evident it is everywhere and and people reacting if you go, go take a drive like you you will see people reacting in this yeah. kind of state driving is an interesting one because you're in like a very kind of it's, it's it's like a serious environment already and you're very heightened in your in your awareness but but people are reacting and they're not really given context of why they don't really know if you ask people why you react to certain way they don't know no and this is this is again this leads really nicely into vipassana because me and you both have been and done vipassana which is yeah. being silent for a very long time phenomenal Oh, such a powerful experience. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a purge. It is a purge. Vipassana is a purge. You sit with yourself for the first yeah, time. Yeah, you sit with the pain. You do. You <laughs> sit with the pain. And the pain, I was, I would like to do it again now that my body is um, healthier because I was very not well when I did it. I did it as, I saw it as part of my treatment, basically. I was like, I'm gonna go and get rid of some of this emotion. Mm -hmm. And I'd read all of this stuff about it. And when I um, started researching, when I was in Mexico still, the one of the um, Dhamma centers is literally like 20 minutes from my mom and dad's house. And I was like, oh. So I applied and I got into one of the courses like that I chose straight away. And I was really like, okay, this was meant to be, you know? And I went and I was, I transmuted so much anger. Like I was so angry at everyone, especially myself, but my family, the medical system, the work, like the anger that was sitting inside of me. And if you actually look at Chinese medicine, obviously similar to Ayurveda with the emotional attachment to organs, one of the key organs in mold issues is the liver. Your liver is not detoxing itself properly. Well, in Chinese medicine, anger, is the emotion attached to the liver. So how can you how can your liver be working optimally when you're holding on to that much anger? It's not gonna happen. Yeah, wow. So um yeah, I I found it really um profound. Um but because my body was all, already in quite a lot of physical pain, the physical stuff didn't bother me because I was like, oh well, this is just what I'm used to. However, on the eighth day I, you know, you meditate for what, 12 hours a day? So you- it's, it's, it's almost like I was meditating in my sleep. You don't really sleep. <laughs> so for those who don't know, it's a, it's a past meditation is a meditation technique. Yeah. And uh, they're, they're huge around the world. They've, they've set up the, the Dharma Deep, is it Dharma Deeper? I don't yeah. know. The Dharma is that is, is, is meditation centers. Um, there's a few in, I think there's two in England uh i went to one in herefordshire i think there's one just outside of london uh but that they are all around the world and that comes from india the, this way of meditation and it actually harkens back from what they say is is from the the, the buddha and the technique that the buddha realized had self-actualization and um reached enlightenment through yeah and it was this certain type of meditation i've got a blog actually on my website um, which goes into my whole experience, a very objective. I don't share too much personal stuff. It's a very objective experience of like, I didn't really want to, I wanted to describe what it was, but I didn't want to necessarily give anyone any preconditions of like going into it. Cause I think going in completely open with it um, and just experiencing what it is, 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 is the best way. But yeah, for, for me, you do You they call it the sit um, and you sit in this, in you choose your position but the goal is to sit at an hour at a time and you do about three kind of mandatory in the hall meditations a day and then if you're not in the if you're not in the hall you're meditating walking or you're eating and it's the, silent. most of these are silent silent you don't talk to yeah. anyone yeah I, 
you you're just in no eye contact none and it's i personally didn't find all of that that hard because i had been super isolated that year yeah. i think that makes it easier that makes the meditation yeah. easier absolutely so for me i hadn't really been around a lot of people like when i was in america after i came out of the hospital i was in america for about four weeks three weeks something like that i didn't see anyone i didn't speak to anyone like i was just on my own the only difference is is that when i start to feel uncomfortable i would go on my phone or like distract myself whereas when you're as a person are like there's no there's none of that you're just in it. yeah you can't even write anything down no like, you can't write you can't do anything just you're in your head you start stretching and yes and you'll get looks and you're like oh god yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't you, you just you walk so it's at walking meditations and then in the hall or in your room practicing meditation working on the technique and 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 yeah you you're given you're given a lot of context to it you're given yes. in the evening cool. you're you're given seminars mm -hmm. and and uh going kaji he yeah. uh, comes out <laughs> and he's the most humorous guru i know oh he's the best and he's like <laughs> he's just his little face and he just tells the best stories and everyone is gripped like everyone in the hall is just sitting there like what's he gonna yeah. say <laughs> it's quite it's quite profound like the experience yeah. in which i was having can i speak for myself the experience I was having I I was I was really kind of in deep with it and it teaches you a lot about suffering and yeah. the human the human the what causes us a lot of pain in this world and what causes a lot of suffering is our attachment to things attachment to outcomes attachment to um, the past things what's happened we haven't let go of the future and this inability to live in the present and just witness everything as it is and and you're learning this technique to help you um can recondition yourself mm -hmm. through the the meditation so you're learning this technique to let go of things and just observe you start with your body you observe from your head to your toe and you, and you i was doing full head to toes observations and it would last you know an hour mm -hmm. and you're just you're, you're paying that much attention to sensations and things and just witnessing them as they are and you're learning this technique but you're giving all this context around what really is the the kind of reason that everyone's everyone has pain has suffering yeah and, and uh that's that's the profound part and it and it's also mm -hmm. about understanding you, only you are in charge of your reaction so like trauma happens that's the fact bad things happen every day to everyone but what is going to differentiate your ability to get past that and, and heal is your reactionary process. And so it's like, you know, the actual trauma itself is just an event. It's the emotion we're then putting into the event that's the problem. Um, and Vipassana essentially makes you able to not proceed with these reactions anymore. And you're just like, to me, that was that was the real understanding of how reactive I've been since I was probably a teenager, really. Like mm -hmm. everything, like just not really understanding my emotions very well. Um, and that stuff, when you really learn it, like you're saying, where you're just sitting with yourself, and you're like, wow, I like you're feeling it. You're actually physically feeling it. You're like, oh my God, it's a lot. And um, the one thing that did happen to me was um, on, yeah, on the seventh day, I got this pain and you do get pains and they just explain, you know, you, you, you observe, you don't react and it will go. And that's basically what happens, you know, throughout the whole week. And I'm like, okay, great. So I got this pain and I'm like, right, just observe, don't react, just observe. And I, I don't, I've never had migraines or headaches. Like that's just not really been a symptom that I've ever had to deal with. But the best description of this would be a migraine. Um, it was a searing pain from sort of like here all the way down my right side into my jaw. Um, and it was not getting better. It was just getting worse. And it went on and on and on. So it was like day seven, it started like low key. And then after day eight, it was like getting more intense. Day nine, more intense. Day 10. So day 10 is when you break the silence and they, you know, 
get into the hall when it gets to 9 a.m. Because you're up since like, what, four o'clock in the morning doing this. Mm -hmm. um, you get into the hall and, the, and it's like, congratulations, you know, you've made it. And essentially like you, you, you can now talk to people. And I couldn't speak. I was in that much pain. And I was like, how have I got to day 10? And I'm now I'm allowed to speak and I can't speak. I was like, what is going on? So I, I, I had to speak to the, the guru that was there because you do have like a male and female guru. Like if there's any questions that you've got, they can sort of guide you because they've been taught by Goenka and the other gurus that, that exist. Doing yeah, they've practice. been chosen actually. Someone told me yeah. that they don't, yeah. they don't opt for those positions, but they get chosen, which is yeah. interesting special humans like my <laughs> woman that was doing ours like you just look I looked at her and I was like you are literally an angel like she's like this big glowing amazing like oh she's just amazing you always double take you're like are they floating oh they're yes! just on a bit of a platform yes! <laughs> that's exactly what I thought it was like times where I looked up and I was like she is she sitting or what is guys is like Harry Potter like realms at the moment like it's weird but um yeah, I went, I like, was just absolutely inconsolably crying because I was in so much pain and she was just like, keep doing what you, you know, keep going, keep observing. And I was like, but I've been observing and it's not going anywhere. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm, like everyone, you know, has left the hall at this point. And I'm just like inconsolable. And she's just sitting there like, sort of like half grinning. Cause I think that she realized it was such a big breakthrough for me which I, in, the, in that moment, didn't. I was just like, I'm in a lot of pain and I've just got this awful migraine. Um, and she was like, I promise you, it, it will sort itself out. Anyway, I went and just took myself off and I was like, get in the shower. Like, I just wanted to be in water. So I just went and got in the shower and basically cried and cried and cried. And I don't know what I released, but I was in there for about half an hour, got out, looked in the mirror. And I always find that whenever you're having a breakthrough, mirror work is the best because you basically I feel like you almost look at yourself and you're like yeah you 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 know you're on the right path here you're doing one piece here. yes and My hair's um, still there yes and it gives you that sort of like regrounding re recentering as to keep going kind of thing that's that's personally like what I've got out of it anyway whenever I've just like been in like a really intense or dark moment I've always just looked at myself in the mirror and, and given myself a bit of a talking to um, and it sort of snapped me out of it and as I was doing this in the mirror and talking to myself I just then noticed like the pain had gone and I was like oh and I just felt this instant relief and you know light feeling and then I just went outside and, you know, all the women are talking to each other and everyone is, it's so funny as well, because you sort of like make up in your head, obviously across the week, like stories. Like I basically, because my mum and dad lived um, like down the road when we were all, you, you share dorms with people as well. Um, so there was uh, five women in our dorm and just before you start the silence, you're all like, oh, where are you from? Like, da, 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 like, you know, good luck with it all and blah, blah, blah. So I was explaining like, oh, I'm from London, but my mum and dad moved down the road like a couple of years ago which is really random you've got all these people some people flew in from like austria and places um whereas i'm like oh yeah no, i'm 20 minutes down the road and i was saying to them i was like oh yeah suffolk's great because it actually doesn't really have that much rainfall it rained the entire week and all i could think in my head was like they're gonna think you're such a liar like <laughs> they're gonna think that you're just like the biggest fraud ever and then we came out at the back end of it and like obviously go back into the dorm everyone can talk and they were like god i know what you mean about the rain though like you know it did rain but it wasn't like london rain and i was like okay i thought you lot were all just gonna think that like, i was just absolutely chatting breeze like the whole time what the stories <laughs> it, shows you, that's what I mean. it shows you the stories that you make up and it's just mental yeah. about where we take ourselves with the story uh, that is just beyond not true like and it's something that i you know i do have to work on that daily because i am somebody for sure that can find myself going into the what if anxious sort of thought pattern territory and then by the end of five minutes of thinking like that i've suddenly got a problem that i didn't have five minutes before and it's not even real it's just like 
there is more to just sitting and meditating. It gives you these like really profound inner realizations that are so intense that you can't ignore them. Cause there's a lot of people that will go home. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like I can't do Vipassana at home. Like I, I would go and do the actual 10 days again, hundred percent, but to sit and do it for half an hour every day is not something that I do. I do other things that I find that work for me in my day to day life. But there are some people that sit and do Vipassana an hour a day. And that's the thing that brings yeah. their awareness to, yeah, their reactions and what they're doing and that kind of thing. And it's amazing. It's just an amazing, amazing tool. Yeah, it's interesting because I had that relationship with, okay, so the, the, the protocol, the, the, the take home here is hour in the morning, hour in the evening. Yeah. And then it, it was even an hour in the morning, an hour in the day, an hour in the evening, unless you're a householder. A householder yeah. is a person who owns a home. So essentially, if you're not a monk, then yeah. you do the, 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 okay, this is for you also, hour in, the, hour in the morning, hour in the evening. And I'm like, and I was relating it to the modern day. And I was thinking, well, there's a lot going on now. Like all these seminars, these things that were recorded and the, and the technique which they want to keep in its authentic, you know, pristine version and rightly so um is it how, how do we integrate it into this modern day because so many things have changed so many and this is where i think the western world that we live in just is going to have to just shift in some capacity anyway to suit a more eastern modality of living because i mean even just even a mediterranean lifestyle of living you know having a nap like normal <laughs> whereas and not feeling guilty no exactly resting normal the western realm if you're not on the hustle like there was this guy that i used to work with many years ago and i'm not kidding he must have slept two hours a night mm. the male of margaret it was, Thatcher. it was very very damaging it was very damaging and when i used to say he would he would work in um the la office of this company that I work for and um we would work on stuff together but he would obviously be LA I'd be the UK and so he would just always be online and always contactable and I'm just like uh when do you like seriously when do you sleep and he would he would always say I'll sleep when I'm dead it's glorified isn't it it's, it's unreal and I I <laughs> like even, even then I was like that's ridiculous and you know I was nowhere near as um, in tune with all of this stuff and you know circadian rhythm and all of that sort of um, realm of teaching about the body and as I am now but even then I was like you've got a problem because this is so damaging like I can't even begin to imagine like what your day-to-day -day life must be like if you literally have two hours like how are you how are you even functioning but then obviously yeah. you just got to wait for these somebody to figure that out for themselves mm -hmm. but it is a very 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 toxic mindset that has to be unlearned and i think one of the most important ones to unlearn is that if you need to rest you can rest and you don't need somebody's permission to do that you just need to do it for what works for you um like at the start of lockdown i was like go 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 I wasn't resting enough. I got burnt out. And then I got really bad PTSD episodes coming through. And what I realized is, is that when lockdown happened, I was so triggered after coming out the back end of being severely ill to the whole world having to deal with illness, that my immediate thing was to throw myself into work so that it was a coping mechanism and a distraction. And then when I started to burn out, what I realized is, is that I moved out of my mom and dad's house in February, moved back to London, and then lockdown happened literally about three weeks later. So I wasn't even adjusted to being in my own space. I wasn't, you know, I hadn't formed a life here yet again, you know? So what I essentially realized was like, this coping mechanism was something that I'd done throughout my entire life of like, all uncomfortable feelings, you know, have to be go, 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 have to be on it, on it, on it. And then actually it was like, no, you need to actually deal with this like serious trauma that you've just been through. And that's basically where I got up to very recently. Like I've been having so many breakthroughs and 
where I actually genuinely feel well is the best way to describe it. And by well, I mean mind, body and soul. I don't just mean the physical elements because when your emotional and your mental elements and your spiritual elements are off, you're going to get physical symptoms anyway. So I was doing all of this physical work, taking all the herbs, eating all the right foods, all of this stuff. And then I was getting seriously fatigued and you know, getting some inflammation again. And just, I was like, what else could I possibly do? You know? And it was actually all an emotional thing, a hundred percent, because now I've started to really focus my energy and attention into the emotional work and the stuff that's coming up. And also me asking people for forgiveness. Um, cause I'm not an angel. Like I've not, I'm a toxic person. We all are. Yeah, like, that's, a, that's a step, isn't it? Another, another layer yeah. to this, to this human because when you start, and I was listening to Russell Brand's recovery book the other day, yeah. and he talks a lot about forgiveness and asking those, and 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 it's something that I haven't really delved into much, but I know there's so much to it. And um, I want to touch on what you said about just resting in general. And yeah. I, I think for me, it's understanding that we are in all we're in cycles, mm. like the the universe is in a cycle. Absolutely. Fundamentally, like whatever your opinion about time is. I mean, <laughs> we are in a cycle that the earth travels around the sun and seasons. We don't really have much of a relationship with them. And your body, circadian rhythm, look into that. Like you, you do have a relationship. Like now in the summer, we're out. I'm eating nine o'clock at night on the grass outside. And we're, we're, we're just sat watching the sky till half 10 at night like it's amazing that won't be happening in the winter i'll be going to bed very early like yeah. understanding say again we're mammals we're mammals that's, the thing. Yeah. That, that's one of the fundamental reasons i get into the water and into the cold when wim hof talked about when you see a dog it doesn't make a decision it doesn't think oh i'm gonna shall i go in the water shall i not it just jumps straight in it doesn't it, it yeah. is the water it wants to experience what that is so like we are the we're the same we're the dog we're a living thing and we need to experience these different temperatures and and different ways of being yeah totally and also um for women so we're also we've got the infraradian rhythm which is the moon mm -hmm. so the circadian rhythm is the one aspect of it but then we've also got we're governed by the moon because um a lot of women will find and this has been you know this is like thousands of years old um lineage work this isn't just like something that someone's made up this is stuff that's like been passed down through ancestry is that women um who are in sync um because their bodies are in a natural space so i'm talking like not on um medication like the pill will find that eventually when their body goes back into like its most natural form and its natural state they will start syncing with the moon and that might be with the new moon or it it will be with the full moon you will you will sort of fall into one of those um areas basically um and there's a book actually um that i've just started reading and it's called in the flow and it's all about this um as i don't know i'm writing it down it's going to yeah, write it out. <laughs> like, give it to your girlfriend honestly it's is it's understanding that the medical model that exists is literally built on male anatomy. Like there is, there is like barely any research on um, into like even period health, menstruation. Menstruation um, cycles. So one thing I picked up on a podcast, I think it was Chris Ryan's podcast. He talked about, he lived in a house full of these models, these female models. There was like 20 of them and all their, all their menstrual cycles started it, being the same. Yeah. And I was like, what's happening there? Like, yes. This is what, this is how powerful women's bodies are. Like we, when it's, it's like, there's this, there is this like unspoken of thing that exists within us as women that we can sync with other women, especially and that connection is so key, but it's also to do with the moon. And um, so yes, obviously absolutely circadian rhythm is fundamental for sure at understanding when, you know, seasonally when to get up get in the sun etc but for women one of the most powerful things you can do is understand the synchronicity of your cycle so for me like uh full transparency right now second day of my period i will be doing not very much for the next few days and that is then preparation for when i finish and then my body actually 
balances back out again hormonally that's when i'll get the energy that's when i'll get all of like you know um i'll feel the most sexy i'll feel like the most in myself because i'm preparing for ovulation i'm technically preparing to be um fertilized basically like any other mammal so you that's when you feel like in your best self that's when you get your energy yes um so then you start to decline again and you get and then you start to rest even more and then that's when you get get onto your next bit of your cycle so but no one's told any women this so you've got women that are just like god yeah I feel terrible I feel like this feel like that like I'm on my period blah blah and it's like well what are you doing today you know you are literally bleeding your body is essentially like grieving because you, you haven't become pregnant so what are you what's your day like and then you speak to somebody and their day is back to back and it's like yes of course you're tired you of course you are because you're actually not doing what you're meant to be doing right now which is preserving your energy for the actual next phase and when you like there's there's sort of like um luteal phases basically and and it's it's very interesting but it's this whole other um side of of female health that is just untouched which is all linked to the rhythms of the of nature and the moon amazing i know isn't it i'm obsessed like I, I, it's, it's the one thing I wrote in my um, journal this morning. I was like, today I finished that book because I don't, well, I don't really want to do much else today because you know, it's just what happens every time of the month. You just feel a bit tired and whatever. But obviously, we're yeah. just it's like very big hustler. You've got to do this and you've got to do that, and it's like if you don't do it, you're lazy. And like I just think that that is just so mm. wrong. And the amount of times that I worked, you know, day like. There's that okay. There's this one time that I worked when I was in working as a tour manager in music. I worked uh, all of the Friday in an office. I then went and I used to do the door at um, Fabric. So I went to the guest list at Fabric. I then got home from there at um, probably about 4 a.m. I then get a phone call from the guy that I was working with, tour managing, and he's like, oh, I've missed my um, flight. I was like, right. I was up at f- then like 5 a.m had to sort out all of his logistics. I then had to go and drive, um, like get, get a car, drive to Birmingham. Then I had to drive from Birmingham to this festival and then this festival to Secret Garden Party at this other festival, the other side. I literally hadn't slept in like, uh, what, 30, 32 hours, something like that, something crazy. I was like, I look at that now and I'm like, how was that even possible? Yeah. It, it just, and it's no, um, there's no surprise to me why my health crashed. There, it, there's just not because even though um, I am like in a much clearer space now of like things that I need to do and you know the ways I need to behave. Back then, I would just throw myself into. Ev- I would say yes to everything and everyone because I wanted to like further my career and I wanted to have all these opportunities and stuff. But it resulted in me not sleeping, like literally not sleeping for days. And not through necessarily like drugs, literally just running on Red Bull, adrenaline, coffee, eating shit from petrol stations, like, you know, Costa paninis and stuff. And it's like, of course you got sick, you idiot. Like, this is not how humans are meant to be working or functioning. Like, it's insane. So yeah, now I, I really my days are very different now. My days are very, I'm very firm with my boundaries with myself and also other people. And I'm very like, I'm very slow because I believe that the best work comes from when you are in that restful period where you can really sort of generate your energy. And then when you do have a productive flow, it all just actually comes out. Absolutely. And the things that come up in that silence, when you you just step back and you think the better ideas about, what it is you're doing will come up in silence and stillness. Definitely. Yeah. We've got a misconception around that, around stillness and how it's kind of useless and it doesn't serve anything. And it's just so warped because it's mm-hmm. one of the most powerful times. It's, um, oh, it's really annoying because I can't actually remember what his name is, but I went to see this amazing author do a, do a mm-hmm. talk um, a while ago now. Yeah. This is the one thing that's been affected quite badly is my memory. It's not as, um, it's not as sharp as it used to be. But um, yeah, I went to see him do this talk and he was talking about his writing process and he was explaining that um, basically what we've just said, like you, you, the only time 
you're ever going to get the breakthroughs and the ideas is when you're still and silent. So what he did is that he just basically took himself to the desert and went and hired a cabin with like no distractions, just that it was around nature because he was just not getting anywhere in the city with his writing and stuff. And he just sat and just like basically took mushrooms, smoked weed until, and, and ate, you know, real foods and whatnot and just sat with himself and was okay doing it. And then suddenly it was like, ding, and he wrote the whole book in like three days. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And these are the kind of, I think that these are just the kind of stories that, that we need. Like I've actually been taking a bit of a break from work as in, in regards to, to realign what I want to do and my vision and mm -hmm. how to do it and stuff. And it took me a week of having to, you know, coax myself into being like, stop working. Mm -hmm. Like, is that like, you need to come offline. You need to just, you know, sit still. Um, but I felt that like, if I wasn't on the hustle and I wasn't doing this or that or that, then I wasn't doing, you know, what I needed to be doing in my job and blah, blah, blah. And I was going to fail and I was going to have any money and all of this stuff. And it's literally all worked out absolutely fine. Yeah. And now it's given me the time and the space to actually come up with what my next steps are and realign some stuff and figure some stuff out. Yeah. And the universe has now actually started to really put stuff in front of me that it makes complete sense. Yeah. Um, as to why I had to rest. Um, and my friend always says that she's very prophetic um, and she always gets messages and she always writes everything down and she wrote down recently and she said it to me yesterday when I was explaining this to her you know people like us and by that she means people that are just connected and in tune with themselves when they get the message of rest and stop it's to replenish for the next better thing to come um, and this can go in cycles you know this could be you might be on it for a whole year and not want to have a break because you're so on it and you're so in it and you're just like really enjoying your output and what you're doing but then you might have a break for two years it, it depends on who you are and what you've got going on um as to when you need these rests but you need them we all do and for me whilst i was still obviously deep delving into stuff and coming out the back end of physical illness and all of that stuff I went back to the mentality of hustle straight away. I was like, you know, that was my on button. That was my like, yep, yeah, get back to it. Like music industry flex almost. And now after these sort of, so what are we in five months, six months now of having to reshuffle, I've now unlearned that. And now this way of working for me works. Like, you know, in the morning I can get up and go for a walk and go to the park and do some grounding and breathing and then read a bit and then come home and then I've got a client and then I've got some work to do and then I'll do this and then I'll clean. And then, you know, my day is just very flowy. And mm -hmm. yeah, I think, I think I've never it, we know it works. We know yeah. putting things back, going on a retreat, going on holiday, taking some time out. We know it works. We're not saying like people are still questioning and finding out oh, well, what could work for me. Well, slow down, yeah. first of all, and then yeah. see how that feels. But I think for me, it's that integration period, right? I've been on holiday. I've had an amazing time away, but I've come back and I'm straight back to it. So I haven't integrated anything I've learned in that retreat, in that holiday. Like yeah. what parts of my life do I want to integrate? Integration process is massive. Huge. Yeah. Um, and what? Say again. If you can't do it, then what's the point in going away? Because you haven't, you've just undone all the work from being away. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, and the thing that came up for me then is you, I feel, have a good ability to always predict, okay, I'm going to be in this state uh, in terms of your, your, your cycles and understanding, okay, that's going to mean this for me. So I need to take this precaution or, or whatever it is to, to understand that's going to put me in the best it's like creating a precondition creating a, the best environment for you to thrive and understanding that but that comes with an understanding of yourself and being in tune as you say so how would you would you give someone advice if they want to get more in tune but they just don't know how because because often we don't really take care of the problem or the obstacle the issue when it comes until it's kind of too late and it's like right boom heart attack or, or something happens right now i'll change now i'll quit smoking but kind of anticipating something comes with wisdom comes with knowledge comes with in being in tune with your body so how would you say is the and there maybe a few things to, to to allow yourself to get more in tune 
Well, I think that journaling is probably one of the most profound things that anyone should be doing because when you put your pen to paper and you just start writing, you are like, the, the stuff that comes up and out is, is super powerful because it will make you realize that how you really feel. It's like you having a conversation with your subconscious basically. So I think that like to get in tune with how you actually are feeling, that's like step one. Um, because once you get in tune with the feelings and the emotions, that's when you can start looking at the other stuff. Um, journaling is easy. It's cheap. You just need a pen and paper. So, you know, fiver max. <laughs> and, um, and it's your own practice. It's however you want that to be. Like I always say to my clients, essentially ask yourself, like, if you don't really have, if you don't feel like you've got anything to say or you've got anything to write, just ask yourself how you feel. How do I feel today? And when you ask yourself that question and you just put your pen on the paper, you will then start to write things that you didn't necessarily think were a thing. Um, and I mean, my notes on my phone are also a journal. Like I, I've got actual physical journals that I do write in, but also when I'm just, I get a little thing in my head, like I'll go, oh, and I'll, get my phone up quickly if I'm like out or you know in the bath or something I don't know and I'll just write um in my notes that day of this little thought this little thing that's cropped up because I need to clearly look at it and see what that means and then I'll just leave it and then literally like I'll go through my notes like a few weeks later and I'll be like oh yeah okay cool got that now and I'll just I'll actually either delete them or I'll leave them there depending on how important I think they are mm -hmm. so that's a really good way to like sort of just like get in touch with yeah that emotional side of your connection to yourself um physically movement without a doubt yoga dance walking like especially yoga and especially dance and touch of the self like we're i mean the amount of people that just literally can't touch themselves and i don't mean that sexually i mean like if you sit there and you and you challenge somebody to like just start like sort of um, self-soothe, which is just through your own touch. Like you can do um, a lot of this stuff and it will actually calm down your nervous system response. People really can't do it. They're just like, oh no. Acupressure is another one, really good way to get in touch with your body. If you feel a certain way or feel a certain emotion, there are loads of acupressure points over the body that you can just start massaging yourself. Like this is a really good one, which I'm touching. So for people that are listening, not watching, it's just between your thumb and your, um, forefinger um and it's uh, your large intestine point and obviously with like the whole butterflies in your tummy kind of thing that is an anxiety response and we hold and we host a lot of emotion in our gut and in our liver so this is a really good point if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed or anxious to just massage that and that's going to get you back in touch with with your body as well um but yeah yoga and dancing um without a doubt like I think as, um, as I can talk as a woman, cause I am a woman, um, like moving your hips and, and like getting into your own flow, um, and like breaking the sort of anxiety around movement down is super powerful because you'll find that a lot of women, like you ask them to dance and they're, they're like, they even need a routine or they just like, you know, they're just not interested. And it's actually, you've got stuff like ecstatic dancing where your whole, the whole purpose of ecstatic dance is to literally just like feel. And you just feel the music and you just move to the music. Now for me, I'm very like, when I was young, I did belly dancing classes. So I've always been like very aware that my hips are, that's where I move from. Like that's, that's I can't do a hip hop class. Like I don't have that kind of like, rhythmic breakdown it makes me feel really like weird having to put step after step after step whereas a belly dancing class where your whole purpose is to just move that for me is ideal um salsa another one your whole purpose is to just move every part of your body so if you can just find something that works for you whereas other people like yeah choreographed dance classes are the one they work for them you find that level of movement around dance and that's going to really get you connected with your body and get you moving your body in ways that you didn't really feel like you, you could have before. And it's actually going to create a state of euphoria because you're going to feel sexy. You're going to feel like just so in tune with yourself. Um, and then that leads into 
you know, sex even. Like when you start to get that in tune aspect of your your body and the way that it moves, that is immediately going to improve your sex life 100%. So there's like, there's layers as to, and, and yoga is, again, yoga is exactly the same. If you, if you can really start to understand yoga and the way that your body moves and the way your body bends and how you're releasing, again, that's also going to infiltrate in to your sex life 100% um, because you get to, you just you just get a whole different feeling with with that kind of work mm -hmm. um, and then and, and I mentioned sex because I just think that we um, disregard it a bit as like something that is yeah, we don't a good have, way we don't to get into talk tune. about it do we no and I actually just think it's just such a good way to get in tune with yourself and, yeah, also, and also listening to your body when yeah. you're having sex, like yeah. what's, what's working for me, what's not. Uh, am I, do I feel connected here? Do I not? Am I in my head? Okay, yeah. let's, let's work on that then. Well, why is that? Yeah. Is that because I'm not confident in my body? Okay, we'll, we'll go outside, go, go find some greenery and just dance and see how that feels. And you do it yeah. more and you'll start to realize like the voices in your head We'll just slowly start to quiet down. Ecstatic dance you mentioned is so powerful. Me and my girlfriend do it. We're doing it this Sunday actually. We just set up the we set up the speakers in the living room, and we yeah. just go at it. Go at it for an hour. Um, yeah. I've got some mixes actually on on my SoundCloud. I could put out, but there's there's yeah. there's one I've got. Um, and I put I put on a blindfold the other day, and I just was yeah. dancing. <laughs> one of the speakers is is quite. Um, temperamental at the back and I was yeah. next to it and I was in blindfolded and I was reaching around to the speaker to like touch the button on the back and Nina thought I was like hugging the speaker and she was like great do that <laughs> but I was just I think I walked into a wall but like she she was kind of guiding me um in in space we had many candles going on as well <laughs> but we just we set the scene and just dance and it's just a way to just disconnect from your mind and allow your body to move with the music. And, and you just, you learn things, things come up, emotions, yeah. and you just let them go. It's, it's awesome. Well, it's also like, why do you think the rave culture is so prominent? Yeah. Like people go raving and they love to dance purely because it makes you feel, it makes you feel super connected, not just to yourself, but other people around you. And that mm -hmm. is a big factor as to like, you know, take away drug use or alcohol or whatever, and you just primarily talk about it in relation to movement and music and dance, it's the most powerful space in the world, 100%. And it's why, um, like, you know, I, I really, I can't believe I'm actually going to say this, but like music is the answer to all of this stuff. You just, you, you can say that. What's wrong with that? <laughs> it's a bit, a little bit corny, but it's like, <laughs> that's going to be the title of the podcast. Oh my God. <laughs> Sounds like a band aid commercial. <laughs> band aid. Yeah. yeah. And I was going to talk about indigenous cultures. So forget civilization, forget the half, two and a half thousand years. Think about 30,000 years. Indigenous cultures have been dancing as a practice, as a way to reach different states of consciousness. To, yeah. There are some cultures that will dance till they drop. Like yes. they're, they're, it's, a, it's a practice, it's a way of kind of seeking the divine. It, it, and they, they will just dance on the spot for hours until they can't dance anymore and reach these yeah. ecstatic states. That um, is where we should all be aiming for because mm -hmm. that's when you get really in tune with your body. And that's when, you know, we, we call um, things happening within the body symptoms. They're not symptoms, they're called messages. And the messages are there to tell you something. You just have to tune in and listen. Um, and when you're really in, are in tune with your body, um, the messages, they come up and you're like, okay, great. I'm, I'm there. Whereas yeah. like, if somebody else that isn't in tune with it, the messages will come up again and again and again. And eventually it results in something more serious. And that's the problem. We getting in touch and in tune as early on as possible is only going to benefit like your overall health and wellbeing long-term without a doubt. Um, and then probably as well, I think a really good way to just sort of like understand um, how you feel is through food. Mm -hmm. So yeah. nutrition is, I, I, okay, so for me personally with my clients, 
I just put them on whole foods diet. Like, I don't care what it is. I don't, I honestly, I don't care if it's keto. I don't care if it's paleo, vegan, whatever. As long as you're eating real food, eat it. That's it. And I'm a big fan of intuitive eating. If for you, plant-based is, that's where you sit the best. Do that a hundred percent. I'm not here to tell you what diet works because I'm not you. Yeah, but very for me, yeah. And you can't turn around and tell everyone, everyone needs to be this. Everyone needs to be that. We need to not be doing this. We need to be doing that. Wrong. Absolutely wrong. Um, every single person, the reason that um, nutrition has become so warped and so, you know, convoluted with just like nonsense theories and blah, 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 is because we don't eat enough whole foods. People are eating stuff out of packets. People are eating sugar too much. People are drinking too much alcohol. Like they're real basics. So you strip back the basic element um, back to just that whole foods and just say, yeah, intuitively eat what you want. Unless you're craving, you know, a pizza or you're craving a um, like ice cream or whatever. That's not intuitive eating. That's a craving. That's different. But intuitive eating is having a fruit bowl in front of you. And in that moment, your body's like, mm, yeah, I'm going to eat the apple, not the banana. That's intuitive eating or Mm, do I want meat today? No, I don't want meat today. I'm going to just actually make uh, plants today. But tomorrow, I'll see how I feel. Oh, look, today I actually want some fish. So these are the kind of things where we can get... Um, I, I think that people find the whole concept of nutrition really complex, and I personally don't think it is, mm. personally. Mm. Um, I think it can be very simple. I think what's complex is you, is the mindset around it. Yeah, I, I agree. I completely agree. And actually, last year I was put on so many restrictive diets that I've never really understood. Um, that under like I've never connected or understood eating disorders before because I've I've always been very blessed in the fact that um, I played sport from such a young age and my body's always been like quite fit and healthy and toned and that kind of thing. And so dieting wasn't a thing for me. Like I never went down the route of looking at my body and was just like. I know this isn't right or whatever. Um, and I've always had like quite a balanced diet until I got into my like sort of more mid twenties when it all just went out the window. Um, and so when I got put on these restrictive diets last year, I'm just like, yeah, you can't have this, you can't have this, you can't have this. I started to like get a terrible issue with disordered eating, like really bad. Um, and because I felt that food was unsafe and this was, real food this wasn't you know a chocolate bar or ice cream or any of that this was real foods i was made to feel like they were unsafe um and i found that really damaging um so for me with all my clients now um if they are getting a reaction to a food and they've cut out all of the junk and all of the processed stuff and it's just the whole foods and then they can make an like their own immediate um evaluation about what food is actually causing them harm then they can cut it out because they can see actually when i eat this i think that tomatoes are actually quite inflammatory for me which is very common with what ayurveda would say um or chinese medicine for example would say that anyone that um has like a lot of mucus like don't go near bananas so there, there's like but for somebody to come along and be like, don't do that. I disagree with it completely because that should come from you and yourself and your own understanding and inner knowing of like how you feel in relation to that certain food. Of course, if you are getting a reaction to something that is processed, full of sugar, full of, you know, rubbish and e-numbers and stuff like that, then yeah, like shock horror, you know, it's not a real food. If you're getting a reaction to an actual real food, the likelihood is, is that you've created an allergy due to stuff going on in your gut, due to leaky gut. And there are ways to fix that where you can then put that food back into your, into your diet. But telling somebody here's a protocol and you can't eat like basically any of these food groups and leaving them with basically like rice. Like it's, it, it just, it doesn't sit well with me at all. So yeah. I just think that really, really like clocking when your body is reacting to food mm -hmm. is a really good way um to yeah become more more in tune with that because the amount of people that you know they'll eat eat dinner bloat 
whatever they eat as well. They'll just, they'll, they'll eat dinner and they'll bloat. And then they'll just be like, oh yeah, no, doctor says I'm fine. There's nothing wrong with me. And it's like, no, 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 that's not normal. And they're like, no, no, doctor said it was fine. I'm like, yeah, but it's not normal. And just because it happens to a lot of people, that doesn't mean that it's normal. And one of the things that um, is really prevalent is um, lack of uh, stomach acid production. And that can be uh, due to poor diet and stress and that kind of thing. And the amount of people that have got literally like no uh, stomach acid production and then they're eating these like really heavy meals full of like processed rubbish. Well, of course you're going to blow and you're going to feel crap because your body is like not only ingesting rubbish food, but then it can't get rid of it. So yeah, I, I, I think that, I think that, yeah, food is a really good way to like tune back into yourself and also be really, really careful about where you're preaching your food ideals to. Like food ideology and the business that has been set up around it is, I, I can't stand it. Everyone, <laughs> everyone's theory is correct. It's like, it's not. Like, yeah. of course you're, all your theories are correct because they're going to be correct for you. Yeah, they were, they were correct in a certain environment that that was taken. Exactly. Yeah. So Different foods uh, in different environments are going to, or the same yeah. foods in different environments are going to be different for you. Yeah. Absolutely. And that is, I think, that something. I mean, I think that there's some real good staples. For sure. I think as long as it's colourful, your food needs yeah. to be colourful and it needs to try and avoid anything that's packaged. Yeah. If you can, like anything that's packaged, because that's definitely had a lot more done to it. And also local, like try as much as you can yeah. to, sure. to, to local, consume local food. Like, honestly, I think that that's become, I'm really lucky where I live. I live like just near um, Port Bella Roads in Notting Hill. And like, there's so many market traders down there and there's so many people that are just independent businesses. And like, I'm very, very blessed in that regard. I can go to a butcher, I can go to a fishmonger, I can go to my guys that sell the fruit and veg. I don't really have to go into a supermarket at all. Mm -hmm. And if I do, I go into like a little independent health food shop to get any like packeted things if i yeah them. i have this thing I, they're, they're called health food shops i'm like ah why are they yeah. called they're just food shops yeah food shops exactly <laughs> they should so like, but I it's, say food it's, shop. it's alternative it's like why is yes. health alternative i know but the thing is is like it's so funny because if i said oh i'll just go into a food shop people would assume it's a tesco but i like it's not i go yeah. into a specific shop that has got healthier food options yeah i was listening to paul check on um do you know paul check yes yeah, so I was listening to him. He was on London Real podcast the other day, and he goes into. I mean, it's a bit ranty, but he. Did, I mean, he speaks his truth. He uh, talks about the corporations, and I think it's like nine corporations control eight percent of the food. And it's like he talks about his experience of being in the army. And if you want to, um, if you if you want to get to an enemy, you control the food supply. Yeah, and then you regulate the water or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, look at what's happening at the moment with the bill that they've just passed about food standards that we've got slipped through during this whole pandemic, mm. where our food standards are going to lower. So we're going to have like meats and fruits and vegetables imported. Yeah, from um, the USA uh, and that and that. Uh, well, this is the problem. Like we're very blessed in the UK. The US doesn't have. Um, Sorry, the UK doesn't have um, as many problems with the food um, supplies because actually our regulations have always been quite high standards. So because organic, of the EU, right? Organic. Yeah, absolutely. Whereas they put through this bill, and that's all about to lower and drop. And yeah. so, you know, antibiotic pumped meats, GMO crops, like all of that is now going to come into the country and have no repercussions whatsoever. So it's even more important, more than ever, to shop locally, sustainably know where your produce is coming yeah. from and I, I think as well people think that this kind of that way of life is expensive and it's not because when you actually start cutting out the crap you want to eat less because your body is going to be more nourished you um are going to be more regular in the way that you are eating and actually putting together a meal will last you you know i live on my own so cooking for myself i can cook a piece of salmon and have that over two days so that's two meals done and people i think get they, they don't realize this and I know it's different obviously with families and stuff of course but there are ways that you can shop sustainably cheaply with real food without a doubt is it's about the packet stuff the packet stuff is the is the, it is you know even in the, even in the health food realms like the packet stuff is still the expensive stuff mm -hmm. not the real food yeah for sure which almost brings us full circle because I wanted to bring up the discussion of mold in 
and then I want I would love to touch upon the coffee enema. So molding coffee, which is huge. Yeah. And the USA more than anyone, I think they have like low regulations about it. But there's so many studies. Um, I think I, I sent you the documentary Moldy Movie, but you were yeah. like, Yeah, of course, I know that. But I sent it to you. And I was like, because I've been I'm following like Dave Asprey since yeah. since probably like Joe Rogan five, six years ago. But yeah. uh, he's been in the kind of biohacking wellness world and and the entrepreneur. Like he's a phenomenal character. Mm. But he created he he invested like thousand hundred two hundred thousand pounds in this movie because he, he was affected by mold. Really badly, yeah. And this was like six, five, six years ago when it was so understudied and underlooked at. And he yeah. put so much into it because he was like, there are so many people and so many homes suffering from from mold. Um, and yeah. then he brought out the bulletproof coffee because he had researched all this, like um, yeah. all these coffee products that you could find mold in. And it's in, and it is like the quality of your food. Where are you getting it? Are you thinking about where you're getting it? Yeah. The chocolate, things like that, where if you're not, if it's cheap, it's, it's, it's going to be less good for you. I'm sorry. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the thing is, is that, yeah, even with like the coffee and stuff like that, when you do like, it's in everything It's like, even your cleaning products, your, um, like your makeup, if you wear makeup, your, your shampoos, your conditioners, like the amount of toxicity that we consume on a daily basis is outrageous. And the thing is, is that, um, yeah, so I use, when I do a coffee enema, I use mycotoxin free coffee. Yeah. Like it's actually for like a hundred grams. It's about eight quid, I think. So it's not, and I use, you know, one, two teaspoons to do a coffee enema, but. And what's um, that doing to, what's that doing for you? You don't have to go into too much detail. You go, yeah. much so, want, uh, to be coffee enemas are a really good way to clean out the colon. It's similar to, I guess, like a colonic, um, but you do it at home. You can do it at home. Uh, they use it um, as part of like um, this uh, therapy called Gerson therapy, which is where I first um, understood the benefits of it really, rather than just cleaning out the colon. Um, so Gerson therapy is a way to basically detox the body um, as um, quickly and efficiently as possible through like juice cleanses alongside um, coffee enemas. Um, but they actually have like programs for cancer patients that are, that, you know, worldwide. It's a big, it's a big thing. Um, but what they found in um, cancer patients was glutathione, which is the predominant antioxidant that we all need to be working at like an optimal level mm -hmm. to clear out any issues within and toxicity within the body. For people that have illnesses like mold, Lyme, cancer, et cetera, their glutathione production is minimal. And coffee enemas increase glutathione production, I think it's up to like 700%. I think it's a lot. So you're essentially like sort of waking up your liver when you're doing these coffee enemas. And it's not the same as when you drink it because of the way that it's absorbed, basically, is the, is the easiest way to explain it. Um, and um but yeah it's like when you actually start to really break it down as to like how much toxicity exists it makes a lot of sense as to why people's bodies aren't really coping anymore and what we actually have to do to make sure that our bodies do cope because this is the world that we live in and you can't live in a bubble but it's about like making you know active changes like for me even the method cleaners you know that they're meant to be completely green and like eco-friendly and all this stuff like I, I can smell the chemicals in it. Like for me, I'm so like clean now that like, I will still be very conscious of chemical smells um, because I think that I'm just a lot more sensitive than I used to be. Um, because before I was just super toxic. So I wouldn't really even, it, that, that just wouldn't even come into my mind. Um, so like, for example, for me, like I, I use white vinegar with essential oils to clean. Like that is, for one thing, I know that that's not, that's all natural, it's all fine. It's dirt cheap, dirt cheap to do it like that. And this is the thing, people, they don't, um, they ju there's just no real understanding of education here and um, what toxicity means in, in this day and age. And because you've got doctors that will still sit there and be like, your detox path, you know, your detox systems, they work, like your liver, your kidneys, they work. And it's like, you're not getting it. 
It's not about the liver and the kidneys. It's about the entire system. It's about the gut impacting the lymphatic system, impacting the liver, the kidneys, and then their ability to actually, you know, filter things out. And yes, it might start as a UTI or a kidney infection, but then it's going to go into possible things like renal failure, fatty liver that then leads into liver cancer. Like the connections between, um, yeah, toxicity and the way that the body starts to just like basically break down. There's so much evidence now, um, especially in the functional medicine world. Like that's sort of where a lot of, I mean, Ayurveda, again, Chinese medicine, have been talking about environmental illnesses for donkey's year. There's, it's not new information to them that they like, they even have a protocol in acupuncture for like dampness, which is basically damp and mold within the body. Like it's, it's not, unheard of because dampness also forms into like you know mucus and phlegm and mucus and phlegm then create illness same as what any herbalist will tell you around like the humors so the humors in relation to like where your body sits as a constitution so whether that's like damp or heat or you know cold or dry or whatever so this knowledge that is coming out in the realms of functional medicine biohacking that, that kind of stuff it's not new. It's nowhere near new. They're just now putting the science behind it. Yeah. This is this has been theor theoretical based, um, you know, yeah, just medicine like for centuries, thousands of years. Yeah. Um, but now, yeah, people in the Western realm are just obviously profitable. No, it feels like we need to put it because of our how our brains all work over here and what we're conditioned mm -hmm. to kind of take as truth. Um, we need evidence for it, and we need to see the statistics, and we need to see the studies. Yeah. Because we're not in tune. We're, no. we're not. We're not in tune with, with, with the outside world. <laughs> we're not in tune with ourselves. So it's it's a lot, really. For, it's a lot <laughs> for some people who are very new to this. It um, is. And I would say my best piece of advice is honestly look backwards. Stop yeah. looking forward. Stop looking for the answers. The answers already exist. You just have to go backwards and you have to go back to basics. And once you go back to basics, yeah. you then get that baseline of, you know, sunshine, nutrition water movement community sex love uh faith and spirituality breath work yeah. um you sort of get those pillars sleep rest those pillars sorted and if you still then got problems after that as has been sort of like looked into and your health is still not not um you're not thriving then okay you then go on to sort of like level two now we can start looking at maybe like doing some detoxing or looking at trauma work and like that kind of stuff nervous system work like there are i think that there is like a pyramid basically yeah. and the, the 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 real basics are at the bottom and people are not doing them it's true it's true because how are you gonna start to figure out what's going on with you unless you're not doing the fundamentals to help your body thrive as a human exactly. Exactly. but that's what the podcast is kind of all about really or what is it to be human because we've kind yeah. of lost that in the modern day where we think it's okay to spend all our lives indoors and that shouldn't affect us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Not true. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, I feel like there's a part two coming along. Uh, oh, there's so much more we could get talking about. Sure. Um, but yeah, I, I, I mean, you've gone into it massively, but I do ask, I've started to ask the guests um, what their practices are, what their daily, daily practice. If there was a perfect day, that you know you can just say a few things what's your perfect day and what's your what's your practice what's your go-to what's your consistent you know to draw you back to the moment not to progress but just to be so first thing get out drink water straight away um and i don't have a curtain so i wake up i don't have an alarm i wake up to the sun uh, usually around like it changes to be honest between like Sometimes it's seven, sometimes it's 8.30. I just wake up when I wake up. Um, and then I'll make tea, herbal tea. Um, I'll read a bit. Um, then I'll have a bath with Epsom salts. And sometimes I might be in the bath for like 10 minutes. And sometimes I might be in the bath for like an hour. It just totally depends on like what, I've, what else I've got going on that day. Um, and then I do some journaling. So I do some writing again, might be like five, 10 minutes, might be an hour. Um, and then I don't really tend to eat breakfast. I used to eat breakfast. I used to eat three meals a day, but I've, I've sort of got into the habit of not eating breakfast. I don't get hungry in the morning. So I listen to my body and I just really eat lunch. Um, 
and so yeah make some food go for a walk um i like to just listen to music move breathe that kind of thing um yeah then towards the evening time like start winding down a bit i i'm like an avid researcher so basically most of the time like when i'm out and about even if i'm like sitting down or whatever and i'm reading it's still always going to be in and about sort of health and well-being stuff so I do try and get towards the evening time and try and like switch off from it because I also am a firm believer in balance and like I think that if your whole like you can you can get stuck in health forever when actually it's like no actually you know what I'm just gonna watch some stuff on Netflix it's not even a thing like I don't need to constantly be switched on so that's sort of another aspect to me when it gets towards that evening time of like any other job you, you have your boundary and you sort of like switch off from l learning I think because otherwise you can get a bit too overstimulated um and then yeah um I really like to do EFT tapping but I I was doing that quite regularly but now I only really do it when I feel like I need it um it's like almost like a like a nervous system top up um and yeah those are probably my like main main things i also really love seeing uh, the chiropractor i do that once a week chiropractic is amazing work especially when it comes to like tra uh, trauma release nervous system work that kind of thing so nice. good yeah mm -hmm. i need to uh, dabble in that so good my friend, my friend's a yoga teacher his girlfriend's a chiropractor. oh yeah great perfect sign her up <laughs> That's what, that's the kind of person you like have on your team is like you find a good chiropractor. It's like finding a good hairdresser <laughs> or someone like that. Like you don't let them go. <laughs> Just like, yeah. Amazing. And where can people reach you? Um, so I'm on Instagram. Emma, the alchemist is my name. Um, and yeah, that's got like my website and all the work that I do in on that page is probably the best place to mm -hmm. find me. Amazing. Cool. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. It's been so great talking to you.